How's it going, everybody? Welcome to Paleo Rewind 2022. For those of you who haven't been following this annual event, Paleo Rewind is a collaboration between different paleontology content creators here on YouTube, put together by Edge, where each one of us cover the discoveries made in the science for one month of the year, and then on January 1st, Edge will release a long-form video of all of our segments rolled into one. This is a great way for larger paleontology channels to spread awareness to less well-known ones, as well as a great way to divide up the monumental workload of covering all the discoveries made over the past year. I'll leave links to everyone else's videos in the description, as well as a link to the final collab video when it comes out on the 1st. This year, I selected November, which ended up having a lot more activity than I was expecting. We have several new species that have been identified, which I know is everyone's favorite kind of discovery, so I don't want to waste too much time here. But if you're new to my channel and you just arrived here from yesterday's video by Cretaceous Cast, I would love for you to consider subscribing. I didn't expect this year to be as insanely monumental as it was, but holy crap. My channel started 2022 with 1,250 subscribers. So that means in the past 12 months, we have literally grown over 100 times where we started. But with all that out of the way, let's get into November's discoveries. A lot of the new discoveries that were made during November this year were new species being named. So that will be the primary theme of this video. And first up, we have a small herbivorous dinosaur found in the Willow Tank Formation in Southern Nevada. Rightly named Nevada Dromius scamidae, this find may be fragmentary, but it actually could have a big impact in our understanding of the evolution of different dinosaur groups as they spread across the Northern Hemisphere during the early Cretaceous. This is the oldest known member of a family of small fleet-footed plant eaters called Thalassus Lescalosauridae, found in North America. And what's interesting about Nevada Dromius is it shows a combination of features of the two major subfamilies that are found later in the period, later Thalescalosaurids and the Orodromids. Now, we know that these two groups were closely related, as you can plainly see at a glance, but they do have several key differences that distinguish the two subfamilies. And this find helps us paint a more complete picture of this rather confusing branch of the Ordothiscian dinosaurs. An order that seriously seems like it's been reshuffled almost as often as everything that we think we know about Spinosaurus. And in fact, up next we have another new discovery that shows this successful order of dinosaurs living in one of the most interesting environments that we know of of the time. Next up, we have to travel halfway around the world and to a later time in the Mesozoic, to Romania around 70 million years ago. Now, what you have to realize about this region is that it was extremely different in just about every conceivable way from what we see today. Most of Europe was inundated with a shallow sea, and there were islands all throughout, forming a subtropical archipelago. And for many of the large animals from the mainland, this would isolate them and start to do some interesting things to their biology. This is another example of islands causing animals to shrink to accommodate the lack of space and food available in the area. So we see things like dwarf sauropods and, by Mesozoic standards, tiny crocodiles. The thing is, these were the animals that had adapted to be on Hatsag Island for a long time. Now, many of the islands throughout Europe were divided by shallow seas, but Hatsag Island in particular had a very deep trench that went around it. This would make it much more difficult for animals to be able to island hop to get back and forth, isolating animals like the sauropods and making it to where they couldn't return to the mainland. But apparently some animals did manage to travel to this island later. Because this is where our new discovery comes in. The ornithopod known as Transylvaniasaurus. Now, on the mainland, Transylvaniasaurus would have been a pretty modestly sized herbivore at around 2 meters. But on Hatsag, it was one third the size of the largest plant-eating dinosaur around, the sauropod Magiosaurus. 
So this probably gave it quite the advantage on this lost world within the Cretaceous world. And because it's so similar in size to its mainland cousins, it's thought that this was an example of a later spread of dinosaurs to the island and that they were not here alongside the sauropods when the inland sea first cut off Hatsag from the mainland. And to me, it's really interesting to think about the implications of something like this happening. Especially since we see so very often today just how fragile island habitats can be to the introduction of invasive species. I think one day I will have to make a video talking about Hatsag Island in more detail. In the meantime though, I know Henry the Paleo guy has made a great one about it. But as long as new discoveries keep coming out of Romania, there's still going to be a lot more to discuss on this topic. For our next discovery, we have the kind of thing that paleontologists get really excited about. Not only do we have a new species, but we have a fossil that is so well preserved that it even shows internal organs as well as the animal's last meal. Now, Cretaceous fossils from China showing remarkably well preserved imprints of small bird-like theropods sporting a covering of feathers is nothing new now. Fossils showing these traits have been the entire cause of the feather revolution, and they've been pouring out of China for the past two decades. But a fossil with this level of exquisite detail is not something that you see every day. They name the new species Darlong Wangi, and this thing can teach us so much. We've got feathers, we've got basically a complete skeleton, and we even have the remains of this animal's intestines. How is that even possible, you ask? Well, if you look at this dark patch here, under closer inspection, it was discovered that this was the result of densely packed microcrystals formed from the bacteria in the stomach as the lining of the intestines decayed. And within this dark patch of crystallized guts, the scientists found the partial skeleton of a frog. The Darlong Wangi specimen shows the very first case of intestinal preservation in a theropod lineage very close to birds. Although this animal was not an actual bird, it was a close relative to the true avian dinosaurs that had already evolved at the time. Birds likely lived right alongside Durlong and many of the other similar animals that occupied the Cretaceous forests. And finally, we come to what was probably the biggest discovery made in November 2022. Another new species announcement. And once again, another animal from the Cretaceous. But this was a whole new species of Tyrannosaurid. More specifically, a new species of the genus Despletosaurus. Named Despletosaurus wilsoni. For a long time, we only had one species in the Despletosaurus genus, known as Despletosaurus taurosus. And then, in 2017, Jack Horner found a smaller skeleton, which was coined Despletosaurus horneri. This animal lived around 2 million years later than Taurosis, so between the size, age, and anatomical differences, it was decided that these were two distinct species. And then now this year, with the discovery of Wilsoni, it seems to be perfectly filling in the gaps. For one thing, Despletosaurus Wilsoni falls perfectly in between Horneri and Taurosis in the Cretaceous, being around 75 million years old. It also is larger than Despletosaurus Horneri and smaller than Despletosaurus Taurosis. And it even shares many of the different traits of both the younger and older species. We don't normally get such a picture-perfect transition in the fossil record. And the truth is, more than likely, as more fossils are found, it's probably not going to be quite as cut and dry as this turned into this turned into this. It's not only plausible, but probable that two or more members of this genus lived alongside each other in Cretaceous North America. I like to use living animals as an example, so look at it this way. Within the genus Panthera, there are five major species. The tiger, the lion, the leopard, the jaguar, and the snow leopard. And six if you count the clouded leopard, but that's technically a neophilid. 
these related predators, all part of the same genus, exist on Earth at the same time because they all live different enough lives and inhabit different enough habitats to be able to survive without pushing the others to extinction. So perhaps the Despletosaurs were getting progressively smaller to fill a slightly different niche on the landscape from possibly larger Tyrannosaurs, like the branch that would lead to T-Rex in a couple million years time. I love Despletosaurs. Partly because in the past couple of years, it has been a really fascinating animal to study, as we learn more about the complicated family tree of the most powerful land predators the world has ever known. But also, because a tooth of one of these was actually the very first dinosaur fossil I have ever had the pleasure of adding to my fossil collection. And with that, we come to the end of Paleo Rewind 2022 November. This entire year has been absolutely outstanding for discoveries in the field of paleontology. But I have to say, I'm really glad that I got November. I was originally going to talk about Despletosaurus in its own video when the discovery was made, but then I got the chance to do Paleo Rewind again, and I figured I would just cover it in my month. And now, I will send you all back to Edge for the final chapter of the Odyssey of 2022. He'll be covering December tomorrow, and then the next day he'll be uploading the entire multi-hour-long collaborative video of all of our segments in order. And like I said before, if you missed any of the previous 10 videos, I'll leave links to all of them below. Thank you so much to Edge for putting all this together. And finally, I just want to give a special thank you to everyone who has subscribed to Paleo Analysis over the past year. I still can't even wrap my head around the amount of growth that this channel has seen in 2022. I... I really don't know what else to say besides thank you. And now I can't wait to see where 2023 will take us. Happy New Year, everybody.